This video shares a technical perspective on BAT 2.0. My goals with this video are to share the scientific and uh, research concepts related to BAT and also to promote research that is directly related to BAT. Uh, furthermore, I'd like to clarify the ethical debate surrounding BAT. Uh, for one thing, uh, I'd like to point out that not only is BAT uh, just as solid ethical grounds as the techniques that we might be currently using, um, but it's actually taking things a little bit of a step further in terms of controllability and predictability. Uh, the prerequisites for this video are the four videos, Talk With Me, Walk With Me, Survival Skills, and BAT 2.0 setups. In each of those, you'll learn some of the aspects of BAT so that the research that we're talking about today will actually make more sense. If you're familiar with BAT 2.0 from a seminar, that would also cover the similar material to the videos in terms of prepare, being prepared for the research that we'll be discussing in this video. Let's take a look at some of the concepts and research that apply to BAT. First, exposure therapy is a technique or a general, a general process really for people. Um, it's a technique that has um, many sub-techniques to it. Um, systematic desensitization is an example of an exposure therapy. Uh, but basically it's about careful exposure to a trigger at a level of stimulation that the, um, the learner uh, can handle. So it could be real or imagined. Um, so certainly when you're working with humans, you can uh, walk them through um, an, an experience mentally. Um, but the idea is that it's um, in vivo, so you're actually doing you know, sort of thinking through or doing um, the experience rather than simply talking about it. Um, so they might use relaxation. So when you have an exposure therapy that applies, um, you know, that's systematically graded, um, that also has a component of learned relaxation. So the, um, the person who's there does a relaxation exercise after the exposure to the stimulus. That's called systematic desensitization. Um, it is often has that cognitive, cognitive component because people can talk um, and we can't, of course can't do that with dogs as much. The person chooses to participate which is important uh, and something that I folded into that as well. Uh, they're, the concept of taking breaks, so if they reach a certain level of distress, um, it doesn't have to be huge at all, but um, the person can say, I'd like to take a break, leave the room. Uh, if they're afraid of spiders or whatever, um, it turns out that that doesn't um, make things worse. It doesn't create extra avoidance. It actually reduces the stress for the next uh, repetition of exposure. Uh, there is less return of fear, and we'll talk about this more, um, if the heart rate is not elevated, especially if it's not asynchronously elevated in terms of the um, person feels fine or say they feel fine, but their heart rate is actually elevated during that process um, that you get less return of fear. All right, so there's <clears throat> this concept of reconsolidation. Uh, and there's a really good book called Unlocking the Emotional Brain. Uh, and it, in that, it's basically, that's a book for therapists, but it has a, a nice description of reconsolidation. There's also good research articles on it. Um, and basically, reconsolidation is a way to erase some memories. So we basically, there's an event um, and this is usually done with people because you can recall that event um, or it's done with the research on animals has been done with um, creating a fearful event so that they can un, you know, erase that memory later um, using reconsolidation. In terms of dog training, it's harder to apply because we can't access that original memory, so we can't recreate that situation in their heads, um, but there may be some ways to do it and I'd like us to think about it. Um, so basically an event recalls that fear memory. This is how it works. Um, so something happens that now they're thinking about it. Um, so they're really sort of pondering that experience. Um, and then between about 10 minutes and six hours, that memory is labile. So basically it's been taken out of the file cabinet. It's now open for, you know, for it to be changed and then refiled. Um, so that during sleep especially is when it's refiled or reconsolidated. Um, and basically the reconsolidation um, extinction will destabilize and overwrite that learning. So during that 10 minutes to six hours period, if you actually do some training, there's a possibility that we may be able to erase some memories um, or change uh, the content of that emotional memory. Controllability, the dog knows they can gather information. Um, so they, they have, their behavior has an effect, as I said before. Um, they can go away if they want to. 
Um, it creates resilience to have controllability, even in the face of uh, an event that happens uh, later that's uncontrollable. Um, so even though not all experiences with a dog, you know, they can't always leave or they can't always control it, um, the more control they do have, the more resilient they'll be in the face of some uncontrollable stressor. Um, and definitely uncontrollable stressors produce a constellation of outcomes that are negative for the health of the dog um, and, and their general well-being. Uh, let's take a look at some of the stressors of what they could be. So some final thoughts. Um, that is a humane and tool that's science-based and certainly as more science comes in, it, it will affect uh, what the technique will look like. Um, we definitely have much more to learn uh, about our dogs and, and that's in all aspects really. Um, as well as what techniques we can use uh, to help them have better lives. Uh, we have a bat research group, so it's bat related. There's some uh, discussion of, of research specifically on bat, but most of the discussion there is about research that has already happened, that has been published, um, that we can discuss that has some bearing to bat. So I recommend that you join that group um, and continue the discussion that we have begun today.